Welcome everybody, I'm the Indiana James and today I'm going to be your travel guide. England, 14 day trip itinerary. England is the king of castles. Prehistoric ruins, Roman archaeology, mythology, theater, fashion, and much, much more. You can't see all of England in just one trip. It's impossible. This itinerary will be a basic rundown of an awesome trip. If you want to know more about this trip and how to do it, please download the ebook at a minimal price and it will offer you everything from destinations, travel maps, recommendations, and further detail, side trips, transportation services, hotel recommendations with reviews, and even my personal email for help and further recommendations. These videos take a lot of time to make. If you feel like donating to help me make future videos, please feel free to donate with my Patreon account in the About Me section here on YouTube. Enough of that for now, let us begin. Just so there's no confusion, with this first video we are focusing solely on the country of England. Not Great Britain, not the United Kingdom, and not the British Isles. These can get confusing, so let me break it down. This is the country of England. This is the country of Wales. And this is the country of Scotland. All three countries on this island make up Great Britain. Great Britain is the entire island. And this is Northern Ireland. Great Britain and Northern Ireland make up the United Kingdom. And this is the country of Ireland. All of these countries combined make up the British Isles. And this is the Isle of Man. And they completely march to the beat of a different drum altogether. But let's get started. Destination, London, England, Gatwick Airport. Day one afternoon activity, head towards Maidstone, England. With this 14 day travel itinerary, you're going to want to fly into Gatwick Airport since it's on the south side of London. It's roughly a 45 minute drive from Gatwick Airport to Leeds Castle. While Leeds Castle is your first destination, Maidstone is located right on National Highway M20, which we would call an interstate. And on the east side of Maidstone, is a day's in, which is less than five minutes away from the castle. Settle in and rest up, you're going to need it. Day two, morning activity, Leeds Castle. Leeds Castle was constructed over a thousand years ago, starting out as a wooden structure built on two natural islands by a Saxon chief called Led or Lead in the middle of the River Lynn. Kings used this castle as a getaway throughout the ages and it was favored by King Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Leeds Castle is the epitome of what royal lifestyle would have looked like. The castle is surrounded by breathtaking landscapes filled with babbling brooks, flowers, and gardens. Day 2 Afternoon Activity, Canterbury. Canterbury is less than a 40 minute drive east of Leeds Castle. Canterbury is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is famously known for its cathedral. Although it has always been an important site due to its strategic location and ties to the Roman Empire. But when the king's followers assassinated Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury over the rights of the church, he became a saint and Canterbury became the most famous pilgrimage destination in all of England. From here, pilgrims would then make the pilgrimage to Rome and then on to Jerusalem. Day 3, morning activity, Cliffs of Dover. Less than 30 minutes away, the White Cliffs of Dover gets its name from the massive 300 foot tall chalk cliffs. Dover, being so close to France, was a major port city for the Romans as they invaded Britannia. Dover also boasts having the largest castle in England, built by the William the Conqueror in 1066. Day 3 afternoon activity, London. An hour and 40 minute drive will get you to London, England. London is my favorite city in the world. It has so much to do and see. Two great ways to see the city at night is a riverboat cruise. This will allow you to see the city from a completely different angle that you can't see on land. Another great way is to go up the London Eye. The London Eye is basically a Ferris wheel and it's the largest one in all of Europe. The Eye is the most popular tourist attraction in all the United Kingdom with over 3 million visitors each year. Day 4 morning activity, London. Since there is so much to see in London, I decided to make a walking tour map of the city. 
One of the best ways to get around London is the underground, which is a subway system. We start this walk at the subway exit Tower Hill. Here you are right in front of the Tower of London, which is a castle located right on the River Thames. Here you can take a tour and see the crown jewels of England. From here you can visit the Museum of London or the British Museum. The British Museum is one of the world's largest and most important museums of human history and culture. Stroll on down to see Buckingham Palace. This is where the Queen lives. You can also view the changing of the guard and visit Westminster Cathedral and then walk through the park down and see Big Ben and the Government Palace, the Palace of Westminster. There is a quaint little pub here that I love having fish and chips at with the view of Big Ben from the window. If you find it, you'll love it too. After lunch, cross the bridge and experience the London Eye if you haven't already. Moving on, you'll go past the historic London Bridge and the picturesque Tower Bridge. This is one of the best places to take pictures of London. This is a big trek, but well worth it. Day four afternoon activity, the theater. I am not a theater buff, but when in London, do what the Londoners do, which is theater, and I actually loved it. There are many famous theaters in the theater district of London. I was fortunate to see The Lion King and Les Miserables, and I have to admit it, being in London, watching the performances, they truly are better than the movies. What an awesome experience. You won't need to rent a car when in London, but make sure you have one rented for the rest of your journey. Yes, it is possible to take buses and trains, but to do this right, you need your own transportation. For instance, I once took a bus to Stonehenge and then to Bath, and then I missed the bus back to London because I got caught up sightseeing in Bath. It turned into a mess. Get your own transportation. Let me warn you though, you will be driving on the opposite side of the road. This is scary and nerve-wracking for the first day if you have never done it. But I promise you, you will get used to it after a day or two. Day 5 Morning Activity, Avebury. Avebury is a little under a two-hour drive from London. To my surprise, Avebury is yet another Stonehenge that in my opinion rivals the notorious Stonehenge. This massive Stonehenge is the largest megalithic stone circle in the entire world. It surrounds an entire town that has sprung up in the center of it. It's over a half mile in circumference alone. At its height, there were three stone circles that made up one of the largest religious sites in the world. A quaint medieval town sits in the middle of the hinge, and the village pub, the Red Lion, is the only pub in the world enclosed by a stone hinge. Be sure to take a stroll through the village and marvel at how historic this place truly is. Day 5, Afternoon Activity, Stonehenge. 40 minutes south of Abury is Stonehenge. There's been so much mystery surrounding Stonehenge, and there are new archaeological discoveries occurring every year. Stonehenge started being constructed roughly 5,000 years ago. Hinge, meaning ditch, encompasses two different stone circles. The outer stones are the larger stones, roughly standing at 13 feet tall. The smaller stones, called bell stones or blue stones, due to their bluish tint, come all the way from Wales, and it is thought when drums were played inside the structure, these stones would start to vibrate, causing a bell-like ring. This site has been used as a burial site, a massive sundial that marks the winter and summer solstice, and a place to worship. There are dozens of cozy bed and breakfasts all around Salisbury, Stonehenge, and Avebury. Find one you like and settle in. Day 6, Morning Activity, Salisbury. Just 10 miles south of Stonehenge is Salisbury. The thing to see here is the Cathedral of Salisbury. This cathedral is a Gothic architecture and it's famous for having the tallest spire in all the British Isles and one of the largest cathedrals in the world. This cathedral also boasts having the oldest functional clock in the world and it has the original copy of the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta is kind of like our Bill of Rights here in the United States. Salisbury has beautiful views located on the River Avon and an incredible example of what a medieval center looked like. Day 6 Afternoon Activity Dorset Around 40 minutes southwest of Salisbury is the county of Dorset. The main focus here is the Dorset Coast, which is a World UNESCO Heritage Site. 
known as the Jurassic Coast. Many dinosaur bones have been found here in its beautiful chalky white cliffs. From walking tours and fossil hunts to boat trips and town guides, you'll have an awesome experience. Day 7 All Day Activities Dirtle Door Beach. Dirtle Door has one of the most famous stone arches anywhere in the world. The sea punched through the limestone around 10,000 years ago, creating the archway which is connected to a beautiful beach with wonderful views. Relax and enjoy the day before driving to your next destination. Day 8 All Day Activities Dartmoor. A little less than two hours west of Dorset is Dartmoor National Park. This national park is a vast moorland dominated by roaming ponies, majestic rivers and forests, wetlands and out of this world rock formations. Hiking is the number one activity to do in this park and Oakhampton Castle and Brentor Church are must-see places to visit that contain breathtaking landscapes. Day 9 Morning Activity St. Michael's Mount An hour and 40 minute drive southwest will take you to your next destination and it's almost the most southern tip in all of England. St. Michael's Mount This famous site is a peninsula during low tide and an island during high tide. This mount has played a key role from the days of prehistory all the way up to World War II. Starting out with a monastery on top, this island has seen its share of castles and churches being built throughout the millennium. It was even reported that the Nazi ambassador was planning on retiring on St. Michael's Mount after the Nazis took over England if they won the war. Day 9 Afternoon Activity Beaches As you drive down the coastline to get to St. Michael's Mount, you will come across a series of some of England's most beautiful beaches. Pack a picnic and soak in the rays at the beach. Day 10 All Day Activities Glastonbury Your next destination is a three hour drive back up northeast to Glastonbury. I know three hours is a long drive, but remember that you're going to be driving through some of England's most beautiful landscapes and scenery. Stop in some quaint little village for some snacks and enjoy. Glastonbury attracts visitors from all over the world. Glastonbury has more history, religion, and mythology wrapped up into a single town than any other place in the entire world. Glastonbury had the very first Christian church in all the British Isles, and before the water was drained for farming, it was claimed to be the island of Avalon, the home of Camelot and King Arthur. Visit the Glastonbury Abbey. Legend has it, what is now left of the Abbey, was once the site of a church founded by Joseph of Arimathea. This abbey is thought to be the burial place of King Arthur. King Henry VIII is the cause for the destruction of the abbey when he was on the quest to eradicate the Catholic Church out of England. The massive pillars are a reminder of how large this cathedral truly was. And some artifacts still remain, hinting at the splendor of what used to be. This is authentic medieval tile. The color and texture is still very much intact and would have covered the entire abbey during its time. Shop and have lunch in the medieval town and make your way out to Worryall Hill. The tree that made up the thorn crown of Christ is also said to grow here after Joseph stomped a wooden staff belonging to Jesus Christ into the ground. The next day the tree had sprouted. Again, you'll find dozens of bed and breakfasts around the area to choose from. A lot of these places will be a bed and breakfast with the town pub combined. You won't find many American style hotels around. Day 11, morning activity, Glastonbury Tour. Start your trek up to Glastonbury Hill. On your way, stop at the Chalice Well. The Chalice Well is said to be the place where Joseph of Arimathea washed the blood out of the cup of Christ, and that's the reason why the water bleeds red. We now know that the abundant iron in the hillside turns the water into a reddish hue. Heading on up, you'll pass the White Spring. This is a calcium-rich spring inside, like a cave, and it's a holy pilgrimage site as well. Up on the top of the hill, you will see the Tor. The tor, or tower, up on the hill is said to have been the place where Prince Malagant kidnapped Lady Guinevere and held her for ransom. Whatever your beliefs, Glastonbury by far has the most history and mythology of any other place I have ever been. 
In the summertime, Glastonbury holds a huge five-day festival where thousands of people come to participate in music, dance, comedy, theater, circus, and many other arts. Day 11, afternoon activity, Bath. Just under an hour drive north is your next destination, Bath, England, which is known for its hot water sulfur springs. Bath was a pagan dwelling that the Romans took over from the Celts when they conquered the land of Britannia in 43 AD. Bath is now dominated by its beautiful architecture and impressive religious churches. But at one point, this place worshipped more than the Holy Trinity. The Celts worshipped the magical powers of the hot water baths, and they used the site as a shrine to Sulis, the goddess of healing and sacred waters. The Romans named this place Aqua Sulis, translating to the waters of Sulis. Here you can see statues of ancient gods such as the Roman water god Neptune and the Owl of Minerva, representing wisdom. Offerings to the gods took place here for hundreds if not thousands of years. Roman ingenuity can even be seen in the pipelines. The pipelines were made of lead and are still intact after 2,000 years of use. The secret healing powers of the baths come from the sulfur in the water that help cure common ailments. The Royal Crescent is also a very interesting place to visit, built in the late 18th century. These are actually condos for the upper elite of its time. The Crescent boasts a large open yard for picnickers to come and enjoy. Find a nice bed and breakfast and settle in. Day 12 morning activity, bath, the circus. Not to be mistaken with the Royal Crescent, the circus is not a crescent-shaped building, but an entire circle of townhouses. The architect who surveyed Stonehenge used the same circumference of Stonehenge for the layout of the circus. The circus was also designed for the prosperous Englishmen of its time. Be sure to head down to the River Avon and walk across the Pulteney Bridge. This bridge is one of the only bridges in the world that contains shops crossing the entire bridge. Before you head out, find a nice pub along the river and have lunch. I suggest England's famous fish and chips. Day 12 afternoon activity, the Cultswolds. An hour and 20 minute drive north is your next destination, the Cultswolds. The Cultswolds is not a town, but more like a protected area. I guess you could say similar to a park. It's the third largest protected landscape just behind the Lake District and the Yorkshire Dells National Parks. It's been named the largest area of outstanding natural beauty in all of England, covering nearly 800 square miles. It is best known for shire-like views of rolling hills, to the sound of bells ringing, and sheep grazing in between some of the best picturesque villages in all of England. The quaint stone houses are toppled with ivory and surrounded by beautiful gardens and evergreens. There are so many beautiful towns to visit. One of these is still on the wall. This medieval town sprung up on one of the old Roman roads and boasts to have the oldest pub in all of England over a thousand years old. There are dozens of hiking trails in the area with plenty of shopping for souvenirs and antiques. Take your time and hop from town to town and find a little place of beauty just for yourself. There are so many wonderful bed and breakfasts around this area. Find a cozy place with a wonderful view. Day 13 and morning activity, Oxford. Your next destination is Oxford, a 45 minute drive east. This county is notorious for having the oldest university in the English-speaking world, Oxford University. Oxford is just shy of being a thousand years old, and its spires symbolize the Gothic-style architecture of its day. With its beautiful architecture, the university looks more like a palace than a school. And if Oxford wasn't already famous enough, Harry Potter took its fame to another level, filming many of the scenes on the grounds of Oxford. This has dramatically increased tourism here at Oxford. Day 13, afternoon activity, London. Since it's just an hour and a half drive back to London, enjoy one more night out in London and fly out the following day. Day 14, morning activity, drive back to Gatwick. Driving from London to Gatwick is about an hour drive, 
but depending on the time of your flights, you might be able to see one more glorious sight in London before you have to fly out. Well, there you have it, my 14 trip itinerary and guide to England. There is so much to do and see here in England. Where to go, where to stay, how to get there, how to book activities and side trips. Where are the best places to stay and the best spots to see in the country. It can all be overwhelming. Well, to answer a lot of these questions and many more, go ahead and download my ebook, which takes care of a lot of these concerns. In this book, I will help you plan and tailor the trip for your own unique experience. To see some of the other itineraries covering England, Great Britain, and the United Kingdom, click on the links below in the description area. And be sure to check out my Patreon account. And as they say in England, for goodbye, see you in a bit.